Hey guys, in this video we'll be continuing with the Python video tutorials. Uh, we'll be going over uh, the else clause in regards to exceptions. So the try accept statement may have an optional else clause, which appears after the accept clauses. Uh, so a block of statements that appears after the else clause is known as the else suite. The statements in the else suite are executed after the statements in the try suite, only if no exceptions were raised. If an exception is raised, the else suite is skipped. I'll still show an example here. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll just have a, a main function. And then we'll uh, just have, we've done this code already a few times, but I'll just do it again. So we have a total of 0, 0.0. So I'm going to change it. I'm going to add something to the, to the code that we've done before. If you're watching the playlist on Python, so we'll have a try block here, indentation, and then we'll have an in file variable pointed to the open function. And then I'll pass in a Windows path here. So your path may be different depending on your machine. Well, of course, my path will be completely different from yours, but unless we have magically the same uh, computer name and you're using a Windows machine and you named it file.txt then we might have the same path but uh, if you have a Mac or Linux you may have to put the slashes like this maybe uh, one slash whoops maybe one of those one of those or two of those you can uh, you can google it uh, how can I write a path for my machine? Type in whatever machine you have. You'll find some help on that. Or you can just play around until you get it, whatever one works. Actually, we're going to open this in read mode. say for now we'll have a four line in in file so we'll go over uh, we've gone over this before but we'll continue it in sequences in the next uh, part of the series when we talk about lists and tuples we may go over some reasoning as to why this uh, well we went over it but maybe we might see some more information on how it actually works more why this uh, actually why this for loop uh, actually scans everything line by line when we use the in keyword but we'll you explained it but we may go over it again uh, if you haven't seen that video just uh, go back to the start of the playlist so you can understand what's happening so what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through the file line by line I'll just say amount points to a casted float. Uh, to line, whatever line has, it's going to cast it to a float. And we'll just call total. We'll say we'll total equals to total plus amount. Your total, total points to total plus amount. We've also gone over this operator. In previous videos if you're confused so again it's just total points to total plus amount so 
So now we'll just close the file outside the for loop. And after all the after all that we'll get out of the try block. We want the in file dot close in the try block just in case it raises an exception. So outside of the indentation of the try block. If you can see these lines here that PyCharm is showing us that the indentation ends here and the for loop indentation ends here. So we're out of the for loop indentation. Uh, when we wrote the close uh, line or the close command in file.close, then outside we'll, we'll outside the try block we'll write the accept block. So we'll say accept. We'll just call exception so it'll catch any exception or it'll uh, handle any exception. We'll call it basically any of them ERR. We went over this in the last video. Then we'll just print ERR. So it's going to print the message, the exception message. Then after all that we'll have an else. Uh, print total. So what's really happening here is that if no exception is raised then we're going to print total. I believe that's what I said earlier. I explained that uh, the block of statements that appears after the else clause is known as the else suite. The statements in the else clause, or sorry, the statements in the else suite are executed after the statements in the try suite. So the try suite's here, this whole block basically. Uh, so the statements in the else suite are executed after the statements in the try suite. So once again, only if no exceptions were raised. So if there's no exceptions in here, then the else block is going to get hit. If there's exceptions in here, the accept block is going to get hit and the else block won't get hit. So that's what I have for a comment here. If no exception is raised, we will print total. Uh, and or basically if no exception is raised we will hit the else uh, from the try except block it's not like an if else but we'll hit the else uh, try except block so this else block so I'll just save it control s and then I'll run it and I'll hit the run button at the top right corner Okay, I don't think that was supposed to happen. Uh, I forgot to call main, that's why. There should be an exception. Because the first uh, line in this file.txt, it's actually a, it's a non-numerical string. So it's code, C-O-D-E. It's going to try to convert that to a float, which should raise an exception. It's going to try to convert the string to a float, a non-numerical string. So like just some letters. And here it's telling us that it could not convert string to float code. There you go. So it's code with a new line. The Python interpreter is telling us. It's telling us because uh, we have, we, we asked the interpreter to print out error. ERR, we named the exception as an object named ERR, which prints the message if we just print ERR. It's kind of just a trick you have to remember. So it tried to convert that string to a float. It couldn't, an exception was raised. Therefore, total wasn't printed. 
Now if I just take the float out, let's try this. I'll take the float out. Uh, let's try this and see if that works. Okay, so it doesn't want these uh, concatenated like this. Uh, unsupported operand types for for all this is called plus equals float and stream. Okay, so where's our float? We took the float out. Did I save it? Saved it. Uh, okay, this is a float here. Okay, that's why. That's why. It's trying to convert. It's still trying to convert this to a float. It's still trying to do basically an operation. So it's having a 0, 0.0. It's trying to concatenate. I believe it's trying to concatenate this string. Because amount points to code event. Because remember the first line is code. So it's then trying to concatenate code to the 0, 0.0. So maybe if we just change this to like this. A string 0. Uh, try that. There we go. In that case, it worked. Uh, so I printed all the data in the file. Okay, so what happened here? Okay, so we initially we initially called. Sorry, we initially uh, took total, pointed it to a string named zero. Sorry, not zero up zero. Then we had a try block. We said, okay, try to open this file. For line in in file, so it's going to start at the it's going to start at the first line in the file. Line's going to point to that file as a string, basically. So it's saying, okay, well, amount points to line in that case. Then total points to total, which is zero points to zero plus amount. So it concatenates zero and code, which is the first line in the file then it keeps doing that so then it says okay well for line and in file so line now points to the next line in the file after the first new line because at every line there's an imaginary new line uh, at the end then amount saying okay well amount points to line now so it gets now amounts now pointing to the new line so it's saying okay well total points to total whatever total was which was initially I think this it's concatenate every it's concatenating everything in the file so last time total was zero which points to zero plus amount amount was code so it was zero code and then it keeps going and then it gets the next line and concatenates that uh, so it keeps concatenating itself And yeah, so it pretty much just goes through the whole file. We can just do a deep, we can just do a quick uh, run, we can do a walk through line by line just to, so I don't confuse anyone. Just on that, that second or third iteration, I'm just wondering what happened to that new line. So let's just uh, walk in here. So I'll step in, total points is zero, step over or step in. So we have a string here uh, named total, which is holding zero. So now we have a try block. We'll step in. So it's saying, okay, well, in file points to this file. Step over. For line and in file, we'll step in. So it's saying, okay, well, line points to code. Now it's saying, okay, well, amount's going to point to line. So amount's basically going to copy it. It, it's going to copy line to amount, which is going to be code. Then it's saying, okay, well, total points to total plus amount. So zero code is going to be total. 
Now the line is going to point to the next line in the file, so I'll step in. So now lines 1, 2, 3, 4, it's saying, okay, well, amount points to line. Now total points to total plus amount. So total points to, so total is zero code, it's a string. So total points to zero code plus amount, which is a string. So we'll step over. Okay, so the reason why there was a new line was because after code we had a new line. Which then, so now, pretty much, it's kind of tricky to understand this, but we have one variable. Has, which has, you can hold, one variable in Python can hold a whole document, pretty much. You can even separate it line by line, as you can see. So it's saying, okay, well, we have zero code as a string on the first line. Then it's like, okay, we have a new line, and the variable knows that in the first line, uh, that there's going to be a new line at the end of that first line. So it's going to put a new line there, and then now it's going to have one, two, three, four. So it's going to have zero code slash and one, two, three, four. So now when the Python interpreter reads that, it's like, okay, well, if I print this as a string, we'll have zero co code on the first line, and on at the end, we'll have a new line, which will mean I'll have to put one, two, three, four below that, so it knows how to do that automatically. So if anyone was confused about that third iteration, second or third iteration, uh, that's why. So if we continue here, for line and in file, so line's going to point to the next line, which is now the string science with a new line. Then amount points to line, which is going to point to science new line. So now total points to total, which is this whole thing, zero code, new line, one, two, three, four, new line, plus amount, which is science, new line, added on, like concatenated to the first part of the total. So now for line and in file, next iteration, we'll step in, which means it's just going to get the next line pretty much. Now we have invest and a new line. Did I write those new lines or it's doing it automatically? I think it might be doing it automatically. Because if I check that file right now, hopefully the video doesn't stop. If I click on desktop, whoops. We called it file.txt. Was it file.txt? I'll just open that. Yeah, there's no new lines in that file, so that means Python is adding, after every line, Python's adding a new line. So that just, that helps us solve it, basically. Whoops. So again, if I run that, after every line in that file, after every line of text, there's an imaginary new line. So Python saves those new lines, and basically one variable can hold all this data exactly how it is. All that data doesn't have to be on the same line like this. It can be separated because, basically it will be separated because each uh, line has an imaginary slash n, if that makes sense. So every time Python reads the data, it takes that new line in so that it knows that the line ended and now we're on the next line. So that's how it works. So we'll probably just end it here. In the next video, we'll go over the finally clause and we'll wrap up exceptions. 
Uh, thanks for watching. If you guys like the channel, you can like and subscribe uh, for more programming and investing tutorials, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.